Productions. This is part four in the restoration of my 1990 GT Performer. Today we're going to be removing the paint and rust from the parts of the bike that are going to need repainting. The method that I'm going to be trying is soaking the parts in molasses. One of the things that I like about this method is that it virtually eliminates the possibility of damage to any of the parts that you're stripping the paint from. One of the disadvantages to this method is that it tends to take a lot of time. However, in this case, I think it'll be worth the wait, so we're going to give it a shot. I do have a little bit of experience using this method. Several years ago, when I got married, we decided to use several old Tonka trucks as the centerpieces for our wedding reception. So I was able to go find a bunch of these old rusty Tonka trucks on eBay and restore them. This is the method I used to get the old rust and paint off of the bodies, and that's very similar to what I'm hoping to do to the parts of the bike. The first step is to identify the parts of the bike that need the paint stripped off. The brake levers were definitely looking worse for wear. While it would have been easy to go out and buy a new set that was fairly close to this style, these were original to the bike, and I decided since they made it this long, I may as well just refurb them and keep them. Now in addition to being pretty scratched up, they're completely missing the locking mechanism, including the tabs that are actually just completely broken off the levers. When I disassembled the bike, I had to completely cut the barrel adjusters, so I needed to get a new set of those. I couldn't find the exact model, but these were fairly close, with the exception of being the wrong color. So I'm hoping I'll be able to strip this black paint off and have solid silver models. The rear reflector bracket was looking pretty rough and also had a few rust spots, so I'm going to go ahead and strip it as well. The paint on both the front and rear calipers was looking pretty good, however, all the hardware was rusty and had saw corrosion. So I'm actually going to disassemble them and drop the hardware in the paint stripper in hopes at the very least it will take care of the rest. Much like the brake levers, the pegs had seen their share of abuse. I've never actually soaked aluminum in molasses before, so this will be a little bit of an experiment, but I assume everything will work out just fine. And finally we have the bike seat. The seat itself is in pretty good condition, but when you flip it over you see that the seat guts have a lot of salt corrosion, the same as the rest of the bike. So we're going to go ahead and strip and repaint them as well. As I said before, I'm only going to be dipping the brake hardware, so I went ahead and disassembled the front and rear calipers. I'm placing the different parts that I'm not going to be soaking in different bags. I've tried to keep the front and rear parts separate. I hope that this will help when I go to reassemble them. In preparation to going into the molasses, I'm attaching a piece of bailing wire to each of the parts. This will allow me to both check on them periodically and keep any parts from getting lost. Some of the parts were too small or couldn't easily have the wire attached, so I'll be placing those parts in this cup. This is the bucket that I'll actually be dumping the molasses into and this is where the parts will sit and soak. With the wire strung over the side, I'll be able to pull the parts out and check on them periodically. Next comes adding the molasses. As it turns out, you can buy a giant 5 gallon bucket of this stuff on Amazon for about $25. When you're talking about small parts like the ones we're doing, 5 gallons is pretty much a lifetime supply. We're going to be mixing water and molasses at a ratio of about 5 to 1. I'm using an old paint mixing cup, which helped with the ratios, but it's definitely not an exact science. Warm water will help the molasses mix, especially if it's a colder time of year. Once the mixture has been adequately stirred, you can begin to add your parts. And now it's pretty much ready to go. I would definitely advise storing this outside because the more time that passes, the worse it is going to smell. I checked on the parts after one week. I was definitely being a little optimistic, and absolutely nothing had happened in that amount of time. At this point, I've decided I've waited long enough. I had a little hiccup, which I'll go over in a little bit, but the first step is to get all the parts cleaned off. The main things you're going to need are water, a bristled brush, and a lot of patience. Now we can take a look at the clean parts. As you can see, the aluminum pegs turned out really nice, 
About half of the paint just came up in the molasses. Almost all the rest of the paint came off with some light scrubbing with the bristle brush. I'm sure if I stayed at it long enough, I could get 100% of the paint off. But in my opinion, it's not necessary for this part. Next, you can see the painted steel parts like the seat guts. The molasses removed nearly all the paint and rust, and very little scrubbing was required to get the rest of the paint off. Unfortunately, the powder coated parts were another story. I had never tried using molasses to strip powder coated parts, and as it turns out, it doesn't really work. These soaked for two months, and the paint looks exactly the same as it did the day they went in. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to find another method to get the paint off. In this case, I'm going to be using a portable sandblaster. Sandblasting can be pretty abrasive, but these parts are very thick. I'm not worried about losing any logos or anything, so I think we're going to be okay. In addition to the sandblaster, I have some heavy leather gloves and a face shield. Unfortunately, I don't really have any way of filming this without damaging the camera. But here the parts are after the sandblasting. As you can see, it pretty much worked perfectly, with the exception of the finish being fairly rough. So in summary, we tried the molasses paint stripping on three different types of parts. In the case of the aluminum parts, the paint was loosened up quite a bit by the molasses. They did require a little bit of scrubbing with a bristle brush in order to get the paint off. We had the greatest success with the painted steel parts. The paint basically slid off when I held them under the faucet. And finally, I found out that molasses stripping does not work on the powder coating. However, in the case of these parts, it turned out that the sandblaster was a perfectly safe alternative. But even this wasn't a complete failure. I have several old parts that started out their lives powder coated, but somewhere along the way somebody spray painted them, and usually not very well. In the future I'm going to try soaking some of these in the molasses and see if I can get rid of the bad spray paint jobs and still leave the powder coat underneath. I'll definitely be trying this in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Where was it right here? Yeah.